Welcome to Fast Fridays presented by McConey Setup Shop. Tonight is going to be a little bit different. It is chaotic out there. We have let just a bunch of cars go out on the Irwindale figure eight circuit. And even then it has a little bit of a rampy jump in the middle here. And for those of you who haven't joined us before, Fast Friday is, is a weekly series by McConey Setup Shop featuring a varying car and track combination completely free to come and take part right here in the broadcast race with us and uh, go follow along with those social media pages because you guys help decide what the car and track combination is every single week out here so make sure to go click and follow over there on McConey Setup Shop. My name is Joey Atterbury and joining me in the booth tonight again is Jake Reeves, Ryan Bauer, the bearded sim racer working the controls as our producer. And uh, we're using some camera angles provided by Dougie Beard. As you see, it's kind of the figure eight here. So we can pretty much leave it on one camera shot and it can cover the whole thing. But Jake, what is this place? Well, I mean, you know, everybody at home, you know, Irwindale, California, Irwindale Speedway, it's traditionally a mile or excuse me, a half a mile racetrack all the way around. This is where a lot of uh, short track enthusiasts, I guess you could say, out in the California area uh, come to race. This is actually their all-star race, if you will, with late models, uh, you know, with the super late models. Even tour modifieds come out here and race as well, but this track has numerous uh, configurations. It's also got a uh, racetrack that is on the inner of the racetrack as well. I mean, it's got five different configurations, and one of the configurations that we're going to see here tonight is the figure eight uh, configuration. And this is going to be actually a very, very fun race right here to watch, Joey, because uh, you got a lot of guys out here that's got a lot of talent that's going to be out here in this field. And uh, they're going to be putting on a show right here. But the main thing about it, one thing for sure, we're going to see a lot of contact get put out here on this racetrack. It is a figure eight, and yeah, it crosses over right in that intersection we are looking down at. We have the grid up on the screen for you. On row number one is a Jeff McConey and Jared Reed. Both of them are in the Tour Modified. Then comes Brayton Laster. Yes, that Brayton Laster that competes in the real world that you might have heard on the television set. Always loves his slice of pizza out there. And Chris Thrasher lined up next to him on row number two. They're also in the two Robotifieds. Then in fifth place, we have Ryan Billy. He is in a Kia Optima, one of the only Kias. Then Joey Masovich in his number 64 NASCAR truck Ford F-150. Then we have Andrew Player in seventh place, also in one of the NASCAR trucks. And then Blair Russell. And Blair is in the other Kia Optima out there. It's so only two Kias. Then we have two more cars, actually three more. They are all going to be in the NASCAR trucks category. It's Patrick Solari, Gavin McCool, and Aaron Shiflett. Those are gonna be the uh, 11 cars that are gonna be taking the green flag here at Irwindale. It's a beautiful day for a little bit of chaos racing. And honestly, uh, Jake, before we got going, looking at that track map and trying to figure out this place, it, we're actually almost using more of like the formula drift circuit. We don't use the outside oval per se, but we kind of use the cut back. And then granted, we use the figure eight rather than them S shape, but it's more the formula drift circuit than anything. A absolutely, that's exactly what it is. And you know, you might actually see some of these guys might actually do um, the handbrake, if you will, to actually drift. Uh, around this circuit because um, you know I've actually took some test laps here Joey and if you've got a button to where on the steering wheel or on the keyboard or whatever that you can use to try to pull that handbrake uh, and drift around these corners that's gonna actually benefit you more than it would hurt you big time as you see wow even the pace car going over the ramp right here uh, and and Joey one thing I wish you know I, I hate to say it but as a fan and a lot of fans out there watching, we just wish that ramp wasn't even there because that would make this a lot more exciting, but it's still gonna be very exciting to watch every bit of this right here. Well, I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of 
like the idea of the ramp because did you see the pace car go over the ramp right there? That was some amazing stuff. So I was hoping that we could extend this uh, pace car period <laughs> as we watch the entire field, except for the Legends car. Oh, what happened back there with the Legends car? And you know what? I didn't even notice there was a couple more. Jonah, SB, and Colt Cecil. There was two more names that I didn't catch on that uh, qualifying grid, but we are green flag racing at Fast Fridays, and already it looks like uh, we've got a spinner around in turn number one, but it's the Tour Modifieds getting out to the early stunt, and there's the chaos in the back. Absolutely, chaos all over the place, and these trucks right here basically going over that ramp. Basically look like they're on the Baja 1000, if you will, and uh, with the Tour Mod going over, it kind of looked like the Batmobile kind of flipping through there just a little bit, but out front over everybody's Jeff McConey wow wow tried to go over the ramp had a truck that was trying to come under him and just barely got over him not able to get tore up that van but I'm telling you right now with that VR system or the VR the VR that he's got it had to rock him just a little bit just get rocked right there going over that ramp now there's a little bit of chaos for Jeff McConey our race leaders he in the intersection just gets annihilated i think he was going for the hammer down approach and uh unfortunately jeff mcconey paid the price so now our new leader is still a tour modified and jared reed brayton laster the pizza man let's focus on brayton here real fast because brayton's a real world professional and he might not have the pizza car necessarily on the uh the scheme for this week but I know that he loves some pepperoni pizza, and if you are curious, you can see this young man actually compete in the Real World Arca series on TV. Absolutely, and he is uh, very, very skilled at what he does, even on the rig, as much as he is on TV. And you see Brayton right there, able to slip past a couple of guys, actually slip past uh, Jared Reed for the top spot overall. As Reed, he's actually kind of crammed in back behind one of these trucks spins one of them out that's the 10 truck right there of uh shift from uh just a second ago as we were talking about but brayton laster straight up putting it on them right here and joey one thing i did want to mention right here with these guys that are running these tour mods i didn't actually think that this was the best idea you would think that you know in my opinion the legends 34s would be the way to go but these tour mods as low as they're sitting down on the ground especially when they're not going over that ramp and going through the middle of it as low as they are uh they have less chance of getting i guess you could say t-boned as as the trucks would be uh, not only that but uh they're pretty much like a big old go-kart out there look at the giant uh tires that they got on them so as long as you slow the thing up it's got plenty of grip to get it turned so yeah, I think the two are modified it's clearly uh, the car of choice. And even then, it's got a bunch of muscle as there's more chaos in the intersection. What I mean by muscle is that it can go up there and uh, it doesn't get knocked around by any heavier cars. So it can go up there and kind of put its elbows on and not have to worry about getting banged up. And you just see how much grip it has compared to everything else out there. It is totally nimble. Uh, um, and dare I say, like, it's, it's like a little go-kart that took some pre-workout beforehand. Absolutely. And, you know, we mentioned something about, like, the drifting that we were talking about, Joey. But these cars right here, they really don't need the drifting. As you see, Brayton actually gets slammed right there by one of the Kia Optimas in the field. But, yeah, I mean, you know, these cars right here, they don't really need that handbrake, if you will. Just like you said, basically a big... Uh, go kart on steroids, if you will. I mean, that's basically what they are. Got all that downforce, all that turn in them. Now, the trucks, however, one like Joey Masevich is driving right here, he might want to find a, oh, wow, maybe find a doctor after that one right there. He just got, he just T-boned Jerry Reed right there. But these are the vehicles that you would normally want to see, especially in this kind of uh, environment, to have that uh, handbrake, if you will. Right on board with a few of these different cars. Oh, that was Brayden Laster getting caught up in this one. A race leader getting a little bit of an elbow drop. Ooh, you know, there's just a ton of stuff going on. Um, 
So, Jake, let's come up with uh, our own name for this. Uh, what is it? An intersection? Um, should should we? What should we name this area? This square? Honestly, from where I live, I would say that uh, we're just going to call that 75 if we can. And, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, obviously uh, for the folks who do not know me, I live in Georgia, North Georgia to be exact. And uh, if you've ever driven through Atlanta, it is a straight up cluster. And that's exactly what that intersection looks like. It looks like Interstate 75 in Atlanta. So if I had a pick, I would say the intersection, we just put two numbers on it. Just put 75 and just leave it at that. Well, and not only that, but did you see the number 20? He was trying to merge onto the 75 and uh, I think he got a text message. So he just kind of stopped in the middle of traffic, was parked right in front of the jump. And then after that, just had to wait for the right blend to come back in. So I think it's pretty spot on for interstate travel, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, and that's what you would see on an interstate. Somebody on their cell phone probably want a dead stop, probably in the middle of five lanes. I mean, that's what I usually see uh, when I'm on the interstate. But I mean, a lot of, you know, a lot of, you know, good, I guess you could say hard racing going on. Obviously, these guys, I mean, they're just trying to hold on with everything. Good hard racing. Come on, Jake. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and even the 20, he's parked right here at the ramp. He's actually giving them a launch going over the ramp if they didn't already have a launch right there. Uh, the 20 being Colt Cecil, or Colt Cecil right there. He's just trying to help them get a little bit more hang time right there. Hey, this is that number 20 that I was talking to you about. He got a text message earlier, and then he just couldn't find the right off-ramp. And then now it certainly looks like it, it, I, he must be having GPS problems out there. And there's construction going on. There's all these cones out there. Just the 20 is real confused on where to go. And I think Brayton Laster, I'm not sure where Brayton Laster is going either. I think he's making his own laps in the figure eight stuff, but he continues to lead the way. But, oh, look at this. I think we might have a new leader. The O3 is trying to get up there. And I think, uh, I'm sorry, it's not the O3, it's the 24 today, but Jeff McConey just took it back. Yeah, I mean, and Jeff, he's been able to start to claw his way back into this. Matter of fact, getting around Brayton, Brayton actually going into the first turn here at the figure eight. Jeff's actually just now going over the ramp right now. So not too much of a lead right there but for, from Jeff, but a good uh, good drive for him as he's going to go through a huge chaos right here as they go right through the uh, 75 portion of the racetrack. But, you know, good, you know, good drive by Jeff because he called back from that earlier mistake that he had in the race. Now here he is sitting here uh, with a good shot to possibly win this race. Granted, we got a lot of time left in this bad boy. Uh, still anybody's game. But right now, McConey still has it. He's just going to overdrive it. He's going to drive it into the tire barriers, and Brayton Laster is going to slip right past him, or maybe not. He's going to be right on his back bumper as they hit the ramp. Classic infield tractor tire out there just snagging competitors it, it is probably one of the most elusive and one of the most dangerous racing creatures is that infield tractor tire it will get out there and just smash your front end don't even can't even see them out there sometimes that's how elusive they are but they will ruin your night and you're right jake uh I was just looking at, at some of the chaos that's going on on the racetrack because we're not even a quarter of the way through. And I think the majority of the field is um, already turned into donut mode. Yeah, I mean, it pretty much is just, I mean, you know, obviously everybody having fun. Wow, Brayton Laster just gets straight up door slammed by the only Legends 34 coupe in the field. That's Jonah Epsi. Uh, just, I mean, he just straight up drove in there and just straight up doored him. I mean, and you wouldn't think with just that little car uh, that Jonah's driving right there, you wouldn't think that little 34 coupe would actually slam straight into a Tormont, but I'm telling you, he he hit him basically like Barry Bonds hitting a baseball. That's how hard he hit him right there. Big time slam right now, but Brayton Laster's still holding on to the top spot as he's actually lapped the whole field right here, Joey. Jeff McConey was hitting people too hard, apparently, so he got stuck in the fence, just like how this Kia right now is stuck in the barrels. I think the Kia was actually going backwards, and uh, unfortunately for him, he has now just completely lodged into those yellow water barrels. That's Ryan Billy 
And the number 11, that's the black Kia. And uh, now he finally hits the toe button. I, I don't know why. Maybe he was scared getting at all those uh, cars coming straight for him in that windshield. If I was him, I wouldn't even move. I mean, because odds are, you know, you're going to get somebody that's going to slip a little bit to the right right here and just straight up go in there and just annihilate him and then they'll break him loose uh, from them barrels. I mean, we just saw Jeff McConey do it right there. He actually got very close to those barrels. Jeff's actually going to get completely flipped. Shades of Ryan Newman at Talladega. That's kind of what that looked like right there as he flips around and then comes back and nails another truck right here going into turn number one. So, I mean, Joey, you talked about the chaos. I'm telling you, this track right here, uh, you know, there's numerous tracks on the iRacing service, but this track right here definitely uh, shows what chaos can be on the iRacing sim. You want to watch chaos? Let's go ahead right on board right here. That's what Joey Masevich does. And, you know, I... Jake, since this is such a technical place, right? Th this is an incredibly difficult racetrack to learn. You did our track analysis. Why don't you take us for an onboard lap as we round out the final turn here at Irwindale? Yeah, I mean, and we're riding on board right here with my savage as he comes through, almost gets a little bit of a knock right there, but these corners right here, this is actually the inner short track uh, that some of the late model stocks usually run and then you just come straight back around basically in the infield if you will Try to get over that ramp Joey not able to clear another truck But then you go into a right hand turn which basically if you looking over the top of the racetrack uh, You're gonna see how it's coned off. It is basically an eight which is why they call it a figure eight and uh, you know, and then coming back to the strap right there, that's a lap at the figure eight here at Irwindale. Boy, these guys right here. I mean, I'm telling you, I mean, this is like demolition derby. We got guys flipped over right here. Masevich is flipping barrel rolling. Another truck behind him barrel rolling. I mean, it is barrel roll city right now. Star Fox, do a barrel roll. Was that a good, was that pretty good? Yeah, 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 that was pretty good. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, I mean, and honestly, you know, what I was thinking of, I wasn't thinking about the Firefox deal. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking about the Firefox deal. I was thinking Star about Fox. Star, Star Fox, Star Fox, Firefox, whatever, close enough. But anyway, I'm thinking of Top Gun, watching all the jets just barrel rolling and flipping all over the place. That's what I'm looking at anyway. Oh, man, yeah, and, uh, you know, since we have so many laps left, I don't see a whole lot of progress being made, especially with the 20 block in the middle of the racetrack out here. Uh, <laughs> let's go a run through the field and look at everybody's paint scheme, shall we, Jake? Yeah, start I mean, off. Yeah, start off with the number 15 up here, and uh, this is your current leader, Jared Reed. And Jake, what do you what do you think about this one? M3 technology, a nice white and blue with some stripes and stars. I, I mean, I love it. I mean, you know, honestly, you know, from the uh, from the colors, obviously, red, white, and blue, uh, you know, big time, you know, be able to see that or, or that kind of paint scheme out on the track. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, you know, a shout out to America right there. And that's uh, that's where we live, obviously, here in the United States. And, uh, you know, you know, home of the red, white, and blue. Love that. But I, I, I'll be honest with you. This one right here, Joey, this one's got me because I was looking at it a while ago. Brayton Laster. Uh, granted, the pizza man right here got butt kicker, barely even got a 13 on that bad boy. I mean, what do you make of this right here? So, it's very bright. It's very eye-catching. I know that uh, Brayton is always about that attention, if you know what I mean. And uh, I, I think it's very eye-catching, but if you ask me, I've never been a fan of the blue and green together, like this shade of blue and green. Then you throw like the, the hot pink in there and um, it's just, it's not for me, but I get it. it you definitely notice the car out there, but it, it, when you can drive like Brayton Blaster, I don't think it really matters. Uh, you can go out there in something silly and, and still drive the doors off of it. And uh, we got our third place car or I should say truck out there. I'm a pretty impressed that Andrew Blair has been able to drive this truck all the way up to the third place position. 
Got the classic Maconi setup shop scheme on it, and I could be wrong, but I believe that Joey Masevich does all these paints. Absolutely, he does, and you know, I've actually got some paint schemes uh, in my arsenal um, on trading paints from, uh, you know, Mr. Joey Masevich. Matter of fact, Masevich, wow, Maconi gets straight up slid by the he was, he, was trying to, he was trying to bully out there and that was a that was a move that he good for him that he got punted wow he got straight up slammed and also Masevich and player we was just talking about player just a second ago player gets slammed into those tire barriers which was the same place that mcconey got into a while ago but you know back to her or uh or crossed up back to where we was talking about yes joey Masevich, he does a lot of the paints uh, for, uh, you know, the Maconi setup shop for team drivers uh, like myself, uh, Brandon Evans, other drivers uh, on the team. So uh, he's very, very good at what he does. So uh, any of the team drivers, anybody that really just wants a paint scheme made, uh, go have a look at Joey Masevich. Go give him a holler because I'm telling you right now, he can make some killer paint schemes. There's the 99 Patrick Solari that we've been watching out here, white and red. Looks like a uh, classic cartoon anime style on the quarter panel. Looks pretty cool out there. And, and honestly, it kind of pays homage to the whole Toyota TRD theme. They kind of how they have the white and orange and red. So it all kind of plays together there. It looks pretty cool. We Absolutely. Got, then we got Chris the Thrasher in the number 84. Now it shows the zero two out there. And uh, this, this name is kind of amusing to me because I grew up with a friend, Camden Thrasher, and Camden Thrasher is a very successful professional photographer. If you guys are ever wondering about uh, motorsports images or aviation images, go look him up, Camden Thrasher. And the Camden Thrasher photography, it's some of the most amazing stuff you'll ever see. So Chris Thrasher kind of is uh, amusing because of the whole Thrasher name. And then we've got uh, Joey Masevich in one of his own schemes that you were just kind of mentioning out there, Jake. Absolutely. And, you know, Joey, you know, me and him, we've raced a bunch, uh, you know, here in the past couple of weeks, raced uh, Talladega uh, a couple of times uh, this previous week when it was at officials. And, you know, Joey, he runs this, uh, this particular type of paint scheme uh, even on his Xfinity car as much as he does on the next gen car and uh, you know He's gonna be kicking me after this because he told me a couple of weeks ago what the cartoon was or the anime was that he has on his vehicles as uh, Every single one of those characters just took a hell of a ride over the catch fence, but uh, There was a certain type of cartoon. I'm not real sure what the name of that cartoon was but uh he runs it on a lot of his stuff. And then you got Jonah uh, Espy right here in the 42. He's basically just riding around, just taking people out. But I mean, if it was like a race in Atlanta, you know, they they might kick him. But I mean, it's a chaos race. Just let him have at it. And then this, that 20 truck right there, not to um, cut you off right here, uh, Joey, but that 20 truck, that's a best looking truck I've seen out there. Shout out to Dale Earnhardt, Kevin Harvick kind of deal. I like the way that truck looked. We're gonna get a little off track here. Um, say, say this, say cartoon for me, Jake. Cartoon. Okay. All right. I could have sworn you were saying cartoon. I probably would. Look, that's that North Georgia accent coming out in me, Joey. When you hang around me long enough, uh, you'll be speaking just like me, just like my wife does. I guarantee. You. So, funny story about that. Um, I had a buddy from South Carolina a long time ago and uh, uh, roommates. And anyways, it, we were a bunch of guys living together in a big house over there in Virginia. And like I said, he's from South Carolina. We go to Lowe's, right? We need to go get a barbecue. And uh, my buddy's name is Chris. We go up to the Lowe's employee as soon as we go in the door and he goes, Hey man, where are the grills at? In his thick South Carolina accent. And he's like, oh, over like aisle 18, 19. And we're like, okay, cool. Head on over there. Get on over there, it's all the power tools. This dude thought he said, where are the drills at? Instead of where are the grills at? <laughs> the accent was so thick that the Lowe's employee straight up sent us to where the power drills are at, Jake. So yeah, I get it. I understand the accent. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, and it, I mean, that's just, you know, how it is. I mean, you know, you know, certain parts of the country, you may hear guys, you know, have, uh, you know, you know, uh, a more understandable accent, I guess you could say. Uh, but, you know, just us down south down here in, you know, the North Carolina area, uh, Georgia, even Alabama and Mississippi, Kentucky, Tennessee, whatever. I mean, you've got uh, some of those thick southern draws, if you will. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's just, that's just how we was raised. I mean, that's our bread and butter. I love it. Uh, you know, I, I love living over there on the East Coast. It was a fantastic time. And uh, yeah, you definitely get a bunch of thick accents out there. What we're gonna do since we just crossed the halfway point and things are keeping the chaos. So we're gonna take a quick break from Fast Fridays. We'll be right back with more green flag action here at the Irwindale figure eight. When you want to be the best, you can't settle for the rest. For anything on iRacing, there's just one name you need, Makoni. With the launch of Makoni Entertainment and Makoni Competizone alongside Makoni Setup Shop, we now provide the best of the best in setups, paint schemes, coaching, broadcasting, and event organization. With cars across all four license classes, we have what you need to hit the track with confidence. Grab a subscription and save money while going fast at MaconeySetupShop.com forward slash subscriptions. And remember, at Macony Setup Shop, there are setups, but your victories. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Welcome back to Fast Fridays. It is a chaotic Irwindale figure eight with the jumpy right in the middle. Currently, Jared Reed leading the way in his number 15 Tour Modified. Andrew Blair in second place. Not that it really matters because who even cares what's going on out there on the racetrack? And uh, everything's looking just a little bit outside, if you know what I mean, from the good old Major League as we get Jeff McConey taking out another car, not unlike any other unusual Fast Friday event. Absolutely. I mean, these guys, I mean, going everywhere right there, we just saw Thrasher get straight up juked by a truck. So, I mean, you know, nobody is safe at this point right here. I mean, honestly, I think they're just riding around, just having a good time. Everybody, uh, you know, just, you know, going at it. I mean, you got Jeffrey McConey out here. He's in a tour mod. Uh, you got Masevich. He's in a truck. You know, obviously, McConey owns uh, McConey Setup Shop. Masevich uh, basically has been there with him. The, you know, through it all. And, uh, you know, a couple of guys out here that are even sporting some McConey setup shop paint schemes, as you're gonna see this right here. Here's Epps, or Espy right here. He just finally just has enough of it to straight up send some savage straight into the wall, and then he gets blasted by, I believe that might have been Thrasher right there, Chris Thrasher, uh, that straight up got him. And then he gets another one. That one was Thrasher right there that set him straight up into the air get this one more time and see how many times he flips one two three four oh my goodness just completely goes but check it out sticks the landing almost yeah we'll call that right there joey i mean i'll call that i'll give him about an eight out of ten right there on the landing because that was a pretty good land well, Jonah Espy out there is pretty much just acting like a uh, assassin in his little legends coop. 
not even turning laps anymore, just going out there and destroying other trucks here at the Irwindale figure eight. Andrew Player is actually hunting down the lead in one of the slowest vehicles out there. Shows you the pace of our race. Catching Jared Lee, Jared Reed and his tour modified. And uh, we're about to have a new leader here. And oh, right about now, he just overtook the lead. And that right there shows, uh, I guess you could say, awareness uh, from Andrew Player. As Jared Reed's got caught up in a lot of accidents from what we've been seeing here this evening. And Player's actually been one of those guys, he's actually been able to steer clear uh, of all the accidents. So even though, you know, we got chaos uh, spinning around at every single turn, uh, Andrew Player has been one of those guys that has actually been able to keep it very, very clean and try to steer clear of all the craziness going on. So good driving by him. Granted, everybody else is out there trying to have fun, but I guarantee you right now, Andrew Player, he wants to win this bad boy here tonight. Yeah, I don't blame him, you know, that's why you show up to a race to go and collect that checkered flag. We started with 13 drivers, looks like we're down to about two, eight or so on the racetrack. A little bit of a high attrition rate even with the uh, no damage policy going on. And oh, SB just totally misjudged that and I, I think that Brayton Laster has given up on this race altogether I think he's just trying to do donuts and amuse the crowd but donuts aren't his specialty and unless he can make a delicious sauce with some melty cheese to go on it that is definitely not pizza material well I mean and, and you know Joey if he's gonna have the sauce and he's gonna have the cheese you gotta throw some sausage, some pepperoni, some Canadian. I'm going to have to stop. I'm going to end up getting hungry here in a minute. But I'm telling you, that's the best way to have a pizza. I mean, I'm sure. I mean, well, speaking of pizza, we got the pizza man in here. Joey, what do you like to have on a pizza? I'm a carnivore, dude. I was just liking what everything that you were putting down. You know, give me that. Give me sausage. Give me some pepperoni on there. Meat uh, lovers. Yeah, I mean, you can cross the, the line of having too much, you know? Doesn't need to be piled on type of thing. But yeah, I'm a carnivore at heart, for sure. Absolutely. That's that's the best kind of pizza uh, that I can get. And I guarantee you, we're, I'm going to get some hate mail already here in the chat. Everybody's going to be like, oh, really? You don't like onions on your pizza? No. So deal with it but i love having the meat just you know it's all the meat on a pizza just the meat lovers that's that's how i grew up that's the kind of pizza that i always loved and uh you know you would think you know crazy of it and you know joey just you kind of get off topic here but talking about pizza i mean i order like a pizza like say papa john's and i'll get a large and probably eat the whole thing and i only weigh like 160 pounds so i can't figure that one out to be honest with you right there i can eat a whole pizza but i can't gain abs what you're telling me is that you love all of the meat in your mouth. Okay, now you're going too far. <laughs> now you're going too far. I don't know about all that. Now that goes a little, no, no, I'm not like that. No, but I do love a meat lover's pizza. I love them. Uh, Andrew Player is having a tough time with the blinking assassin of Jonah SP out there. All Andrew Blair is trying to do is go out there and win this race, and uh, Jonah has other plans for everybody out there on the racetrack. That's that white and purple little Legends car. We can't really focus on him because he keeps blinking in and out, and that's usually due to, like, a, a bad internet connection, but I tend to think it, it doesn't have to do with internet connection at all. Jake, have you noticed a lot of times these really, really fast drivers, they have these internet problems. I think it's a lag switch that they've got just like right there and they're like, okay, let's blink. Okay, let's come back. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that what it might be. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, I don't think it's really a lag switch. I mean, I've seen it, you know, numerous times, uh, you know, with other drivers just, you know, blinking just a little bit here and there. Uh, you know, even, I mean, that just goes by, I guess you could say, where they're at, I guess you could say, in the country. I mean, you know, you might look at some of these guys, like, say, Jared Reed right here, and one of the tour mods, his ping's all the way up to 150, uh, which is kind of high, I guess you could say, from some of the other guys. Uh, Jonah right there, he's 
uh, out in the Midwest, and he's got 125, uh, Jared Reed, out in California. So, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, the blinking, I mean, I don't necessarily think it's from a lag switch per se. I think it's all just basically what part of the country you are in as, uh, you know, basically from what part of the country you're in as to you're getting in a hosted lobby and uh, say the host might be on the different side of the country. I think that's really what the blinking's got to do with it. I mean, it's, it is what it is. I mean, it's it's technology, Joey. I mean, that's, that's the world that we live in now. Yeah, but that technology could create a lag switch. Like, I, I'm convinced there is no way that you can tell me that the internet going out to billions of people might have a few splotchy parts versus these are cheaters for sure. <laughs> I mean, you got me on that one. I mean, I mean, you never know. I mean, you never know. <laughs> only, only the guy that's driving knows if he's got a lag switch in there or not. Oh. Now, I mean, if we ask them, they're probably going to be like, nah, I ain't got it. Obviously, they would say no. But, I mean, hey, you never know. I mean, you never, you can't actually see what the guys have in there uh, unless they get a driver cam up. And I guarantee them to tell you this, if they've got a leg switch, they ain't going to have a driver cam up, I guarantee you. Oh, my goodness. Now, I'm just being silly out here. Now, I, I know nobody does that. But, yeah, that's, that's what I've got in my mind, you know. And uh, just like when you drive by the school zone and it says that speed is checked by radar. And I just figured that radar is over there sitting on the side of the road with his RPG and, like, the little speed gun measuring your speed. And if you don't uh, get down to that speed limit, he just pulls out that RPG and gets you, you know. Well, I mean, but you know, you're thinking about radar, you know, I mean, down here, we don't know who radar is. We're looking at radar. <laughs> We're looking at a radar gun. You may be looking for a radar, and I don't even know who that guy is. So. You like that pronunciation play on words there, huh? Absolutely. I always do. <laughs> well, to take you guys back into the race, we are coming up on three quarters of the way through. And about 28 laps left. Jarek Reed continues to lead the way in his Tour Modified. We continue to dwindle down the amount of cars on the racetrack. And unfortunately, as you dwindle down, the chaos becomes less and less as well. So, looks like we're down to about... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, Jake. Uh, looks like six cars that are running now. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, you got about six cars out there. Obviously, you know, Jared Reed, he's actually fought his way back. Actually, he is upside down in the infield right now. That is Jared Reed. He's actually towed and went back to the pits. So, Jared, he's been one of those guys, you know, that, that he, he's been able to claw his way back to the front. But he always ends up getting caught up in something. He always ends up getting T-boned, going off the ramp sideways, going for a couple barrel rolls, and it ends up costing him. And, uh, you know, some of these other guys, uh, you know, like Patrick Salar, here he is running in second. He's going to have a shot to try to jump back up here and get back in this, but maybe not. Let's check it out. Jeff McConey is, wow, big time slam. Wow, I'm telling you, these guys right here, I mean, Jeff McConey, he tried to move Salar, as we'll be able to see here in just a second. But Salar got moved big time by one of the Legends cars out here. Now, there's only one Legends assassin, like I said, the blinking assassin of Jonah Espy in the number 42. He refuses to let the leader do any sort of laps. He continues to just take him out of the picture. You know what it kind of looks like out there? Now, I'm going to throw it back. Now, Jake, I actually haven't talked to you about this before. How, how old are you, Jake? I am 31. Okay. So... You kind of grew up, you, it might have been a little bit young for you, Nintendo 64. Now, the original Mario on Nintendo 64, Mario 64, one of the first Bowser battles is you had to throw him off of his little island up there and you had to go grab his tail. And pretty much what uh, Jonah SB is doing is that he's not allowing you to go grab it. the tail, the lead of the race. He's just throwing you off the island every chance he gets. There he goes again. Uh, yeah, I mean, but actually, Joey, this might actually surprise you right here, but, you know, what I grew up on, my very first game system was actually the Super Nintendo, uh, you know, with Super Mario Kart Pitfall and all that good stuff. 
uh, on the Super Nintendo. So that's where I actually started at. And then went from that to uh, PlayStation and then PlayStation 2. And then I kind of got caught up in all the Xbox stuff. So I never actually had a Nintendo 64. Uh, I kind of went into the PlayStation route of it, if you will. And, uh, you know, it's amazing, you know, honestly, how games and simulation have come from back in the day, especially, you know, playing football games, which is what I mainly play on my PlayStation 5 is football and stuff like that. I mean, it used to be 2D and now, I mean, you look at it on TV, you know, when you're playing it on your PlayStation 5 and it damn near looks like an NFL broadcast on a Sunday night. It's just, it's just crazy how video games have came. Uh, especially from like video games like Pole Position and, uh, you know, uh, NASCAR Daytona and stuff like that. And now here we are on a sim rig racing at a figure eight with all these types of cars out here. It's, it's just unbelievable, uh, you know, how technology and everything else has just came from the past. Well, one thing that technology hasn't helped Jeff McConey out is freeing himself from barrels. He has to do it the old-fashioned way by getting a nudge from a friendly helping hand out there. And that helping hand was that blinking assassin. And uh, Jeff firmly gets punted by Andrew Player as he enters the racetrack again. But Jared Reed... And his Tour Modified continues to click off laps. He meets himself head on with a Legends car, just bounces him out of the way. Jeff McGoney giving chase, and this is actually a little bit of a race. I don't know if Jeff is actually going to be able to race Jared Reed and all of his pace out there as shakes off another hit from the Legends car. And now Jeff actually gets back on the lead lap. We're going to see. Jeff McConey can actually go up there and challenge for the lead because uh, he's got a whole lap to make up before he can. And oh, that's a pretty cool kickflip, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, and he was able to stick the landing pretty good as Jeff comes in, door slams Jared Reed. I mean, that was basically his only shot right here. But still, you know, 18 laps to go. We still got a long way to go, especially when you got. Uh, the assassin out there, which is Espy right now in that Legends car. He's been basically driving backwards, uh, just trying to get some of these guys. And, you know, Jared Reed, he's got caught up in some of these accidents from Espy right now. So, honestly, I think what Jared Reed is just trying to do right now is just drive straight, more or less. Drive straight on a figure eight. It's right there. You just saw Espy. He tried to come after him right there. But Reed was able to get by him. So uh, that's that right there is going to be the, uh, and I never thought I'd say this right here, Joey, but that's going to be the deciding factor in this race is, this, is if Espy can get to Reed and maybe flip him over. That might be the only shot that Jeffrey McConey may have for this race right here. Well, I finally came up with the next name for Jeff's figure eight race, and I'm deciding if I should say it or if I should maybe send an invoice or maybe copyright a patent it first before I say it, you know? Make sure I get my money's worth. I don't know, what do you what do you think, Jake? Should I, should I say it or do you think I should maybe let Jeff kind of linger a little? Well, I guarantee you right now I'm interested. I know our producer Ryan Bauer is very interested in this and I'm sure the fans at home that are watching, they want to hear this. So, I mean, you know, honestly, I mean, you got it right here on Fast Fridays. I'd, I'd let it eat because I'm telling you right now, you got a lot of people that are interested for this. <laughs> well, <laughs> all of the dozens of viewers out there, and I'm being sarcastic about it, uh, it's, it should be called the McConey Mixer, right? I mean, absolutely, it is a mixer. And I think the more mixers you have on your webcam, on your sim rig, like let's get some margaritas out there let's get some blended drinks let's let's get more mixing going on but the more mixing you got at the McConey mixer i think the better off you are absolutely i mean you got the mixing up right here you got all the ingredients of a straight up slobber knocker right here basically uh shout out to good old jr jim ross back in my earlier days i guess you could say from back in the wwf version uh, the slobber knockers and all that good stuff. That's what I basically grew up watching, Joey. Uh, and honestly thought that stuff was real. Uh, but I mean, when you're a six year old kid, you're gonna believe anything at that point. Hold on, hold on. Wrestling's not real. 
I might have let some big cat out of the bag right there, Joey. I don't know if I should say anything. Next, you're gonna tell me Santa's not real. <sighs> no, Santa's real. <laughs> Easter, well, Easter Bunny, maybe. Yeah, Easter Bunny, he may be real too. Yeah, I think he is real. Too. I don't know, really. <laughs> I mean, I haven't actually seen him, but you know, depends on who you ask. Now you're gonna tell me the Little Shop of Horrors was just a movie? I thought that was a documentary. I know Leatherface was real. <laughs> I know Leatherface was. Well, we have crossed over to less than 10 laps to go. Jared Reed is sitting parked in the pits, so it's up to Jeff McConey now to lead the charge of the Tour Modifieds and it's kind of the strategy that you were mentioning just a few minutes ago, Jake, is that uh, maybe Jeff McConey could win this thing if Jared Reed is taken out of the race. And just as I mentioned, you know, Jared Reed had to try to miss Espy, and Espy was the one that got him. Actually, straight up just came across the racetrack and threw him all the way into the uh, catch fence right here in the inner part of the figure eight flipped him completely over on his lid and straight up uh, he had to tow and that was the only option that he had so that's gonna help Jeff McConey you see McConey he's actually taking it very very easy right here with SB right now as SB almost tried to get him so McConey knows right now he has the lead and he's got about good margin as SB just comes straight in there t-bones him or head-on collision if you will but Jeff able to keep it on four wheels that's all he needs to do for six more laps is to or, or seven by the time it's scored now six on the board that's all he needs to do is just try to keep it straight right here because jared reed's still in the pits he hasn't come out yet but jeff mcconey he's just got to hang on us now here comes jared reed he's going to try to come around right here he's going to get one of those laps back so jeff has got to get clear of all this if he wants to have a shot to win this bad boy Well, looks like uh, Jared Reed is trying to make a race of it, and I think he's going to get the lead, actually, or at least come close because Jeff McConey is in trouble, and now Jeff actually saw that white and blue number 15 jump across his windshield. Realizes he's got to get a move on, got to get rid of that pesky little blinking assassin out there, and now he's actually going to be able to catch a break because that Legends car is playing turtle over there in turn number two. And when I say playing turtle, he's on his shell. He can't get over. Just got some help from Joey Masevich in the form of a big old punt. And so now the race is back on. Jared Reed chasing down Jeff McConey, but here comes SB to take him out again. SB's trying to get to him the best that he can. McConey goes straight up under some trucks that went over the ramp. So McConey able to get clear of them. Three laps to go, and he's is McConey. He hits the ramp, gets past Espy, so he's able to steer clear of him for just a little bit. But Espy may be trying to hunt him down right here. Is Jared Reed trying to catch up? And now McConey gets doored. This might be what Jared Reed needed right here to try to catch back up. You see Jeff have to take all sorts of lines, and here comes Espy again. Ooh. McConey with a big old stomp on the brake pedal to avoid the blinking assassin. Got the stutter oh. step on him. <laughs> uh, yeah, hit, hit, hit the X button, the juke button out there. As here we go, one lap remaining. Six second lead. Can Jeff McConey avoid any final chaos? Here comes the blinking assassin SB takes him out in the first section and now he hits him head on it's all about Jeff McConey getting back on track Jared Reed is only three seconds back now however the checkered flag goes to the 0-3 Jeff McConey wins this one in some fashion out there wow Fast Friday's figure eight, Irwindale, Jeff McConey, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Absolutely, and, and to be honest with you, it wasn't no easy feat to get this win right here. I mean, obviously he had to fight off Espy, who was just going out there, just, I mean, he was just having a blast. I mean, granted, that's what this race was right here. That's what we always get on the sim for, is to have, you know, these races where they're just so fun to have. 
And, uh, you know, but Jeff, but the, I mean, that made it tough on Jeff right there. I mean, he had to seriously duck and dodge and all those five Ds in dodgeball to try to get the win here. And I'm sure he's going to be very happy to secure a win here on Fast Fridays on McCony Entertainment. And even SP just comes in there and gives him the last little bit nudge, even when he's doing the burnout right there. I, I was waiting to to see what the legend scar was gonna do and it just didn't do anything <laughs> so the back of the two are modified and we're gonna take a quick break be back with the official results and any post-race interviews here on fast fridays When you want to be the best, you can't settle for the rest. For anything on iRacing, there's just one name you need, Makoni. With the launch of Makoni Entertainment and Makoni Competizone alongside Makoni Setup Shop, we now provide the best of the best in setups, paint schemes, coaching, broadcasting, and event organization. With cars across all four license classes, we have what you need to hit the track with confidence. Grab a subscription and save money while going fast at MaconeySetupShop.com forward slash subscriptions. And remember, at Maconey Setup Shop, there are setups, but your victories. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Welcome back to Fast Fridays on McConey Entertainment. What you're seeing right here essentially a time lapse not of king taco but of the chaos the mcconey mixer if you will and it was ultimately jeff mcconey who claimed the checkered flag with the win jared reed finishing in the second place andrew player third patrick solari finishing fourth. joey masovich in fifth place and jonah espy was the only other car that ended up taking tonight's checkered flag. The rest of the cars did not finish the race, multiple laps down. And uh, I know that we've got a few of these guys ready to come in here and talk. And Jake, I believe you're standing by with the winner, Jeff McConey. Yeah, Jeff, and he, I mean, you can see right there on the cam, I mean, he is very excited to get this bad boy right here. Jeff, I mean, congratulations. You've won another one here on Fast Fridays. Thank you. I can't believe I actually won that. I towed like two or three times. I love the background, by the way. It's just the race all sped up. <laughs> oh, my. That was so much fun. And we had Jonah in the legend car just going. He was the missile. He was just going after anyone in the lead. It was so much fun. That was that was incredible. I'm sweating. I can't believe I won it. There was some guy. Yeah, you see him there on the broadcast just sitting at the bottom of the ramp so if you touched him you would flip over it was so much fun <laughs> so i mean you know going into this i mean granted you got to have a mindset to basically dodge all the chaos and then you had uh the sniper as we was talking about that being jonah espy uh, I, I mean what was going through your mind because you saw jared he got slammed by espy and got flipped so you had a shot to try to get it i mean what was your mindset right there basically for about those last 15 laps I, w I was so hyped. I was so excited when I saw him flip over and then I, I was just going for it. But my tires were shot like it was it was insane. It was absolutely insane. Um, but yeah, when I saw him flipped over, I was like, I got this. I finally 
am going to get this. And then he came back out and I got wrecked a couple times and he was only, he finished, I think like nine seconds behind me. So it ended up being really close after a hundred laps. Absolutely. And Jeffrey McConey getting the win here at Urbandale figure eight style, the chaos, uh, the McConey mixer, as as uh, Joey was talking about just a second ago. But <laughs> Jeff, uh, have you got anybody that you want to thank right here, bud? I uh, got to thank you guys for broadcasting it, doing an awesome job, filling the filling up the whole race. McConey set up shop, McConey Entertainment, McConey Competitive Zone, the, all the all the teams behind the scenes. Uh, a lot of fun racing with Joey Savage and Jonah. He wasn't in the Discord call with us, but he was an absolute riot on track. I uh, got to thank Victory Sim, a bruisey raceway, the Sim Racing movie, WSMN Broadcasting, Ron the Snack Guy, that make this whole thing possible. It, it That was so much fun. I, I am really excited to do that again. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for broadcasting it and doing an awesome job keeping everyone entertained. We do what we can, Jeff, and uh, appreciate it, and congratulations on the win. Thank you, guys. Well, and actually, before we bring in our next uh, podium finisher, since we just had Jeff in the booth, you might as well give the shout out to McConey Setup Shop. And if you are wondering where to go and pick up speed, head on over to the website www.maconeysetupshop.com. They are the home for setups, paint schemes, coaching, broadcasting, event promotion, and more on the iRacing service. They are also the official setup shop of eNASCAR. Really cool that Jeff was able to put that together. And they have subscriptions available as low as $8 a month. And how that works is that you go over to that website that I mentioned, www.maconeysetupshop.com. Go find your favorite car, essentially, the one that you like to race. Download that subscription setup. And then all of a sudden, watch your lap times drop out there on the sim. So it's pretty cool what they've put together. Just go on over to that website and check them out. And now we are going to bring in our third place finisher, first in his class. Nice to talk with you again, Andrew. How's it going? Hey, I'm going, doing pretty good. That was a uh, <laughs> that was a wild one, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it was. And and I'm really impressed with uh, the pace that you were able to put together in the truck. Didn't seem like it was the most nimble creature tonight. No, it was not. I, I loaded into the sim and I'm like, oh, I got the nice pretty paint scheme on the truck. I, I've got one for the modified, but it's an older scheme. Like, And once I clicked it, I'm like, I probably should have gone with the modified. Those things just sit so low and handle so good. I'm like, I might have made a mistake. And <laughs> I, I, I was just trying to dodge the wrecks. That was really the key to it was just trying to avoid the chaos as much as you could. <laughs> well, what's the old saying? If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. That's the saying. Uh, I, I wasn't too good at dodging some of those wretches. I had the lead for a little bit, and uh, I, I was doing pretty good dodging the stuff until I got the target on my back. So, <laughs> we, we saw that you got up to the lead there, and I would say, you know, after 100 laps around the figure eight, um, if there was a strength of that truck, was there any, and, and what was it? Uh, you know, the big thing was, I think, kind of the durability of the size. You, you hit some of those smaller cars, and the smaller cars would hit you, like uh, Jonah there. He was having a lot of fun <laughs> creating some uh, extra extra challenges out there, but uh, size beats uh, velocity on that one. And uh, able to take a few more licks from him, and e even when you went underneath the jump, having that taller truck, it really caused some chaos when the cars went over. You you'd clip them, they'd go flying off into the uh, pucker brush there, so that was kind of fun, too. Called him the uh, the blinking assassin tonight <laughs> from uh, what we saw out there. And Andrew, thanks so much for coming out uh, racing here on Fast Friday. Anybody you want to give a shout out to? You, you know, thank you to Jeff uh, McCody, McCody Setup Shop. You guys for doing the broadcast. You know, McCody Setup Shops they have great setups and doing the uh, starting doing the draft masters and you know take their setups, hop right in and go. And that thing is blistering fast. So. Thank you for, uh, like I say, Jeff McConey and all he does for us. You guys for putting on a great show every Friday and uh, really happy to be a part of it. So thank you. That was Andrew Player finishing in third. And before we bring in our next uh, interviewer uh, or interviewee, I guess, that was the second person that I've heard say draft master. Jake, you are the first person to bring it up. What's this draft master? Well, I mean, this Draftmaster series is, uh, you know, an official series. Uh, you got to have a D license uh, on your iRacing account. And, uh, you know, basically it's just, you know, a, a bunch of uh, races. You know, they started out with the, the Craftsman Truck Series, uh, went to the COT 2009 cars, 
Uh, which, to be honest with you, I'm gonna tell you right now, if we were, if we was ever talking about a oopsie uh, in the past, those cars are the straight up oopsie, if you will, because those cars, uh, they don't even have a restrictor plate on them. They go faster than the than the Delara cars. So, uh, you know, just a bunch of uh, you know NASCAR style or, or NASCAR style race cars this week. Uh, they've been with the uh, 87s, the NASCAR 87 Legends cars, and next week they're going to be in the Gem 4s, which is another oopsie, uh, if you will, the oopsie from the Arkham Menard Series cars. So, uh, you know, they do a lot of racing at Daytona, and I think uh, they got about two more weeks at Daytona, and then they're going to swap and go to Talladega. So uh, no cautions in those as well. So if you get caught up in a wreck, you get a faster pair to use, but... Uh, I'm telling you, those races are very, very hectic to race in, and I've been racing them uh, for the past couple of weeks, and I absolutely love them. Well, Jake, unfortunately, you talked too long. Oh, wait, never mind. He's back. Let's bring him in while he hopped back in. And, Jake, you have strolled down to meet up with the fifth-place finisher tonight, third in his class, Joey Masovich. Yeah, Joey, yeah, Joey Masevich, he's in here in the broadcast booth with us. And Joey, I mean, I'm telling you, y'all was straight up rolling out there. I guess you could say, I mean, just a lot of, a uh, lot of crazy chaotic stuff going on. I mean, what was your mindset going into a race like this? I went through a lot of mindsets during this race, to be honest. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, I went in thinking I was fast. I got the pole for the trucks. That was pretty good. I uh, immediately lost all semblance of the lead in turn one. Um, and then and then we, uh, we adopted the missile, Jonah, the hero of the day. And, uh, and all scripts went off the table. Um, honestly, for a while, I had no idea if I was going to be in contention for the lead, let alone... Uh, contention for the truck lead and uh, that was completely laid to rest when I found the catch fence and sat in it for a while uh, we had some people we had troops come and try to un to dislodge me but alas they were not tall enough and uh, and so I uh, went to the pits got my toe came back like 15 laps down and, and that was all she wrote but uh, it was fun it was uh, it was nice to do something different Absolutely, doing something different, and you know, Joey, just you know, just for, you know, for the folks at home, you know, just you know, tell folks what it's like to get out here and you know, race uh, during these Fast Fridays competitions. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, we've seen some outstanding races like we had tonight. Uh, you know, just tell the folks at home, you know, basically what it's like to get in there and race uh, on a Fast Friday on Friday nights. Oh man, these Fast Fridays are all. A great time. Uh, we uh, we try to keep the uh, track and car combo interesting. We usually have a lot of uh, talented drivers show up and and put on a good competitive event, uh, assuming the track and car combo allows for it. And we're not doing figure eight smash ups. But uh, no, on, on a weekly basis, we're putting on good racing. Uh, you guys are doing a fantastic job in the booth. Uh, top notch quality. Uh, honestly, you guys are overperforming, and it, it's fantastic. And uh, and yeah, the show's as good as the race we choose to put on as drivers. Um, but uh, it's usually a good good hour spent. It's a good good way to spend your time. So if anybody out there is listening and has some some open time on a Friday night, come join us. It's it's great. We're, you're welcome. You heard it right here from Joey Masevich. Really. Get out here, get in these Fast Fridays. And Joey, before we let you go, have you got anybody that you want to thank that made this possible tonight, bud? Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Jeffrey McConey for putting, for setting this all up. Uh, you guys in the booth, uh, again, as always, doing a fantastic job. Uh, Jonah, uh, for being the hero we needed in the race. Uh, a bruisey race, race wear for my, uh, for my racing gloves that make... Uh, Gripping the wheel every week, just that much easier, just that much more effortless to allow me to focus on driving. And uh, don't do it with the literature club. Go check it out on Steam. It's uh, it's free, it always has been, and it's the uh, number one psychological horror game of all time. 
Absolutely. They finally got remembered about that. Couldn't remember the cartoon you told me about it a couple of weeks, but finally got it to remember right there. Doki uh, Doki I, I will Doki say, Literature it, Club. It, yeah, Doki Doki Literature Club. It's not what it looks like. It looks like an anime dating sim. <laughs> uh, I could say more, but I'd be spoiling it. It's a fantastic game. It's a it's a very unique experience. It's done and over in six hours. Uh, go give it a try. It, it, you can't argue with free. Absolutely cannot argue with free, and that's what you get here on Fast Fridays. Free racing and getting it broadcast. But Joy Masevich, congratulations on the hard fault run here tonight. And uh, we'll catch you down the road, bud. Thank you. Well, that's going to wrap it up tonight. Want to thank our sponsors, as always, McConey Setup Shop and McConey Competizone. Calling the action tonight was myself, Joey Atterbury, alongside Jake Reeves in the booth and Ryan Bauer producing. And thank you to all of our viewers for watching tonight's racing action. Hope you'll stay tuned to all of our social media pages for the next Fast Fridays race. And also, don't forget to turn us on every Monday night for the Sea Fixed Truck Series. This has been a production of McConey Entertainment. We'll see you at the checkered flag.